what I've been dealing with this week was fluid simulations in Blender. And I've done that because I have um, bought Fluidos for Dash Studio. And I remember looking into fluids in Blender a while ago. And then I remember I haven't actually taken any notes of how to set this up. So I looked back into it kind of to refresh my memory. And then it turns out that Fluidos is almost the same step. So it's not the same algorithms that are underneath it, but it certainly is something that's very, uh, very similar. Let me show you what I've done here in, I think here, I think maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, little elephants. I'm glad they're doing that. I have to say, I'm glad they're doing that. Could this be it? That might be it. Yeah, there we go. That I've made. And that wasn't actually all that um, difficult. Uh, and it's. Uh, I thought we can do something like that and then just play around with these other things that we could apply. So there are three key components to making this happen. There's a kind of a cage that'll be the domain in which the fluid can exist and that whole domain is made up of voxels so it's very closely related to uh, vdb so uh, underneath it each file each frame of the animation is saved as a vdb file in a temporary directory and the the whole domain is going to become essentially voxels and those are then either liquid or air or something else so fluid simulations they don't only make liquids apparently they can also make smoke and fire so it's the same kind of underlying engine that is being used for that and then you need something like an inflow or geometry so you need some kind of geometry inside that domain and that'll be then turned either into liquid and just goes falls down and just splashes or you can say this isn't geometry that's supposed to become liquid like a fixed amount of liquids you can also say this is something that pours like an in pour which is what i've used here so this keeps constantly generating um fluid that's that's being poured into this like you know when you pour coffee from a spout and then on top of that you can then go and have something like an outflow and that's something that will remove fluid from the domain i've never used that but we can totally try that out this would be something if you fill up a sink and then you drain the sink with a plug hole that would be like a like one of those examples oh yeah and then the other thing that you have is something like a cup so that is the effector blender calls it or like an obstacle like fluidus calls it and that's the thing that will stop the liquid from going you know um to the to the outsides of the domain Let's see if I can remember how to set this up, because I had a lot of fun doing that. Modeling the coffee cup and anything and everything in between. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember it. Practice makes perfect. So there we go. That's I've, I've made that. And I think I've also added a handle to the cup here. And this was all rendered in... And there's a bit of overspillage here. I don't really know how to avoid that. But, you know, that's apparently if you set the resolution low enough, it'll it'll work. So this all works in EV, so in real time, which is which is really cool. Oh yeah, I used a different coffee shader here, which I thought would would be a little bit more transparent. But the problem was that you don't then don't see the the funky surface as it happens. So quite nice. Let's do all this from scratch. I'll go and start with a regular general scene here. And I'm not going to delete the default cube because, you know, we can use him. So we can use the, the cube as the domain. All I might do is move him up to the to the bottom level. So GZ1. And then this guy is going to be the domain here. So I think I'll go, let's go rename him first of all into domain. And I think the the funky bits are happening here on this tab. That's the physics simulation tab, I think. In here, you can declare this as a fluid. Can we see it? Can we see it? Can we see it? Yes, fluid. And that'll set, that'll essentially give that object that we've selected a type. And in my case, I want this to be the domain. So flow would be like the inflow or the outflow and the effector is the obstacle. Or non means this object isn't participating in the, in, the, in the fluid simulation. So I'm gonna make the cube the domain and then lots of things keep popping up here. And I think the domain type is gonna be liquid. So it could also be gas. I've never played with that. I just, I just played with liquid. Ga liquid, there we go. Then the resolution divisions here those are technically the that's the voxel size inside the domain 
So if I go, let me just switch this back to gas just now because that means the cube turns transparent. And down here, we can see this kind of mini cube and that's representative of the resolution divisions. So if I set this to something uh, higher, like 60, then that cube gets smaller. So there's more resolution inside the domain. So those are the voxels essentially. But if I set this to something higher, like 10, the cube gets larger. And the effect of that is that the simulation is quicker to calculate, but it's also less accurate. So the fluid isn't going to look as good. I might stick with the 32 here. That's the default. And then switch this over from gas to liquid. Mr. Chris, how's it going? Good to see you, buddy. I think I've just closed that. Yeah, I, meant to, I meant to leave that open so we can actually select these things. Okay, so that's the domain. And currently the cube is visible, so we don't really want to have that. I'm going to shift Z into transparency mode here. And I'm going to add something that'll become the thing that pours liquid in. So I'm going to go and use a sphere or an icosphere maybe, like so. Make that a bit smaller. Or maybe like this. And then I'll go and bring it kind of to the top here. It doesn't have to be... So if it's outside, it doesn't have an effect. It can be half inside, but it can also be completely inside. I might go and do that. And it, it is now also going to be fluid. So with Icosphere Selector, I'm going to go and call that my uh, liquid, perhaps. With that selector, I'm going to go and also make it a fluid. And in this case, I'm going to say this is going to be the actual flow. And that means I now have uh, options here. So flow type, I think that's also going to be liquid, very important. But then I have the flow behavior here. So I have geometry, inflow and outflow. And if I leave this on geometry, then this is just going to turn into one big flabby object and fall down. And that's all it'll do. I'm going to turn this into, whoops, I'm going to turn this into inflow, then it keeps pouring and outflow means it'll take fluid away. So let me leave this on geometry for now and just have a quick look how, how the rest of this is being set up. So if I turn this back into, with shift Z into, into full mode, we can't see it. So I'm going to leave it on transparent just for now. I'll go back to my domain and set some things up in that. So I think It'll be, I'll get rid of that and put, uh, specify a cache directory for this under cache. So this is where Blender is going to save out all these, um, all these files that it calculates. And I've made one that I'll just use for everything, which is like a cache directory on one of my drives. And there's one for Blender and one for Fluido. So if I play around, I'll just use the Blender thing that every time you use you make a different simulation, this is all going to be overwritten. So if you wanted to keep it, then you have to um, specify directory that you can archive. So very important. Let's head over to accept. And then you say, uh, how long is my animation supposed to be? I don't want to do 250 frames. I'm going to just calculate 100, just so that we can, um, that we can do that. And under type, I'm going to select all, so that this button comes up, which is called bake all. And that's almost all we need. I'll just do one other small adjustment, and that is to adjust my timeline to also have 100 frames, so that I have this this thing, you know, on the on the bottom here, that I have a, that I have the simulation calculation be in line with my timeline. And that is really all we need to do. Now we hit bake all here, this big button under the cache, and then Blender's going to go to work. And with the 32 resolution, it's actually going to happen rather fast. And there we go. We can see something. If I play that back, we get liquid simulation. And that's really nice. Isn't that cool? And it even gives you this little preview. So you don't have to worry about shaders at this point. You can just see is the effect kind of what I'm after. And I really, I really like that. So if you wanted to have something like, you know, that goes longer or shorter, you can go and adjust it at this point because the calculations are just so fast. So let's let's adjust our liquid to not just spill down. Let's adjust it so that it basically just keeps, you know, flowing in. So um, let me go and make a quick change here to the liquid. And instead of um, turning it into, uh, oops, under settings here, into uh, geometry, I'm going to set it to inflow. And that means it'll just keep, you know, flowing now. And 
that's the only change I'm going to make. I'm going to go back to my domain and go to the free all. Oh yeah, that's the thing. If once you've calculated the animation or the simulation, the bake all button turns into free all button. So this is now essentially saying I'm looking at this cache directory here. And if I say free all, then the animation is being deleted. And then I have the bake all button again. So once you've made any changes, you have to go and bake everything again. Let's go and do that. Let's see what happens now. It takes a tiny bit longer. And now we should see that water just keeps being, keeps pouring into the domain and fills it up to the very top there. It's kind of cool. And that's kind of what will happen inside the coffee cup. So what we need now to make that restrict not to the outsides of the domain is something like a cup object that can hold that, like the, all that um, liquid. I suppose the other thing that we can do is this is going to be too much coffee. If I have a cup that's much smaller, I'll just go and overflow. So I think I might go and change my liquid object here. Let's make that a bit smaller. And then go and recalculate this on the domain. Free all, bake all. So now we have, or maybe we go and move this up a little bit as well. I can move it outside the domain, so only half of it kind of pours out. Let's go bake this. See what that looks like. <laughs> yep, that's more like like coffee would be pouring into something. I like all the little balls there. So those are just preview things. We're going to get rid of those and turn that into real geometry um, once we have a coffee cup set up there. Okay, let's go and build one then. Um, that's all we can do. We, we don't. I don't have a cap handy. I'll go and build one. Uh, that means I'm going to have to maybe just switch this off for a second and go back into into solid mode here. And I'll go build myself a cup. So I'll start maybe with the cylinder, like so. GZ1 to bring that up there and also put the origin point at the bottom of this. I think that's under set origin, origin to 3D cursor, like so. I'll go and scale that down. I might also make it a little, uh, a little taller. So um, S Z, like make that turn into a kind of a coffee flask, like so, and apply the rotation and scale. Apply all, in fact, and then I go into edit mode and widen the top face here. Make that a bit like a Starbucks cup. Oops, <laughs> kind of like this, maybe. That should do the trick. I'll go and make the, the liquid invisible as well. And we can just deal with the cup. And I think this has to be, I can't just take this face away because it'll be like a planar hollow object. I think I might go and make this uh, so that it has sides. So I'll go press I and inset this face here. Like so, on an E, enter, and then I can go GZ and put the bottom kind of down like so. And then go and scale the bottom in so that we have a little S, Shift, Z, that we have a little, you know, something like that. Does that look good? Chris, what do you think? You're the blender expert among us. <laughs> Tell us, is this something that we can that we can live with. This is not going to be suitable for something if I put a subdivision surface modifier on it. If I were to do that, then this is going to look like that. So it does that because the um, the geometry collapses. So in order for that to be subdivisionable, so to say, I'll go and add some edge loops just so that the geometry will be held in place. Let me do that. Control R, couple here. And we'll say S Z so that we. Oh no, actually we're gonna go and alt select that and just go. Can I grab that up? No, I can't. Ah, oh. should have thought about that before. Do that manually. Put one in here. Okay. 
in one here. That should do that. There, so that'll hold that. And technically, I, print, I think I also need one at the bottom here. Otherwise, that's going to... Uh, that's going to... That is going to... Uh, make an issue. But I can't insert an edge loop here. I'm going to have to go and um, select that edge and essentially extrude it inwards like so and then that should be that and we should technically also do that on the inside here i mean you know i'm, I'm being very pedantic here <laughs> e enter and then we go s shift z and do kind of that that should I could also insert an edge loop up here, I suppose. Should we? Yeah, let's just do that so that that edge is being held in place as well, more or less. That should now withstand the wrath of the subdivision surface modifier. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. It's the perfect coffee cup. I like it. Let's smooth shade it so that it looks super exciting. I think. Shade smooth. Yes, look at that. It's perfection in a cup. I'm hatching plans. I'm going to rename this into cup here. I'm hatching plans of making a, um, putting a handle on this, but I'm also not all that sure how I'm going to do that. I might go and try a cube. Ever so slightly smaller, perhaps. Let's see if we can make ourselves a handle out of that. Maybe just like a stylish handle that just goes um, into into it like so, and just just goes and uh, I think I might be able to make that happen <laughs> inelegantly. As why to make that slimmer? Like this could be the the width of the handle, and apply everything, and it's kind of. I should have made a grid really. I might just go and do that and then I'll add some geometry here like that. Oops. Enter. And then I'm thinking I could just go and remove all these faces maybe. So X uh, faces and then we have something like that it might be a bit too long I can always squish it down that'll be okay if we also subdivided that I might have to I'm not gonna weld it or anything I'm gonna be very inelegant about this I might just go and and squash that Um, yes, S, X, isn't it? That's what I'm thinking of, like, like this. Yeah, like that, and I'm just going to go extrude this face and make it look a little uh, a little smoother with some edge loops there. I'm thinking that's probably going to be enough. There, I'm thinking. So a real modeler would do this very differently because <laughs> ideally these objects should be connected and I don't think I'm going to connect mine. I'm just going to go and, and play it by, uh, by ear here. Uh, so that this doesn't uh, quite collapse. Yeah, that should do the trick. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it will, but let's, whoops. 
Let's find out if I add a subdivision service modifier to this as well. Does it? Does it doesn't look so bad. I don't have any geometry on the inside here. That's going to be it's going to be a minor issue. <laughs> See if we can fill that out somehow. But you know, so far I'm thinking we're we're not we're not bad here. I think this is something that I don't really know about how I can make. I'll take this off again. How can I fill this geometry here now? See if I if I add this. Oh, there we go. Can I just go F? Yeah, that's not going to work well, does it? <laughs> Let's not do that. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. If I do that, does that? Yeah, that kind of works. I like it. I like it. There's always a way, isn't there? Fill them faces. Oh, it works. How exciting. And then this, can I select? Yes, I can. Oh, all right, perfect. That is quite impressive. Uh, is that going to fall apart, though, if I go and put my subdivision service modifier on there? Is that, yes, yeah, going to look crazy. But that's okay. It's a couple of extra edge loops and we should be should be okay. We should be okay. Will it let me do that? No, it won't. Oh, dang. Hey, maybe that's the handle that's the handle we're kind of looking for though. <laughs> if I sm shade it smooth, maybe that's okay. Perfect. <laughs> I'll worry about the rest sometime later. There, that's a handle now. It's more about the coffee than about anything else, so I'm okay with this as a handle. Uh, do we agree? Good handle for now. If I knew anything about 3D modeling, I'd, I'd do a better job, I promise. <laughs> but I don't. This is the handle there. Did I apply things? I think so. I could parent this to the cup too, but I might just leave the handle, not even participate in the whole simulation here. Okay, let me bring my domain back. Also, should I maybe save the scene? It's a novel idea, isn't it? Let's save my scene. And this would be in... kind of here. It's coffee, there we go. I'm gonna call this one Coffee Stream V1. Perfect. <laughs> NFT it. It's the special handle. So if I now go and go back to the domain and go and play it back, nothing's going to happen. That we that the cup is just being ignored. So let me go and free or haul haul this and dedicate the cup here with the cup selected. Let's select fluid and make him an effector. And it has some settings here, and that means collision is fine, surface thickness you can set here, I believe is planar, as if you had something that doesn't have walls. So if I've been absolutely cheap and just removed the top face from the cup, then I could just use is planar, and then Blender's going to try and his best to, um, to calculate this, but I don't know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with geometry here. So now, with that, bake all see if stuff is being poured into our cup uh, that's true we could use half a torus and just um put it on the side yes and i think that is what i've done in, in one of my previous things to just to make it super easy cut the torus in half just go and then you know that's that's certainly a really easy way to do this for the for the handle there we go cup is ours overflowing but it works coffee cup is being filled up so that's really really nice that is not bad i think maybe if i make the inflow a little smaller so that when the time comes it's just at the top that should do the trick right maybe make you smaller or alternatively i could just go and um uh, put it more outside the domain that's also possible i might just leave it like half in here 
domain close settings free all and big all i find that fascinating i find that so fascinating now we have less stuff going in and uh, either we need to calculate more frames like a little bit longer to frame 150 always leave it like this like as it is and just make it a bit bigger again so maybe 150 frames let's do that 150 frames let's do that 150 and then also here the end is going to be 150 and that should now just put more coffee into our cup see if it works see if my theory is sound more coffee is always good but too much coffee well that's just terrible yes yes keep it coming it's a full cup of coffee i like it that is nice it flows a little a little slower now not bad so technically i think um i'm kind of happy with this i'm okay with this let's see if we can let's see if we can go and turn this into geometry now because the, the blue balls that's not quite what we're what we had what we want really and i think you do that also on the domain settings yes that's it so under liquid we need to enable mesh and then the the liquid domain becomes the mesh and there's another thing that says preview i think under mesh well mesh needs to be switched on that's you know that's, that's the one thing that i do remember and then we can go and shift z back into this mode and it should now oh it doesn't do that dang do i have to bake it again that could be I'm glad I've made some written notes so I could always look it up there. We're gonna try this free all and just go bake all. I've totally made some notes. Here's too much coffee. Yes, absolutely. Could be. Does this work? Yes, there we go. So that's that's how I had to do that. And now we have coffee being poured in here. And also some little spillage drops jumping on the outside i don't really know how to avoid that but that's that's coffee in the cup that's quite neat and it has that little nice spilling motion there and we can add a subdivision surface modifier to this to make it look a little smoother or at least shade this smoother shade smoother that's that does something coffee <laughs> so if i wanted to have this in a better resolution now i can go and increase the uh, increase the voxel size of this so it'll, it'll take a little bit longer to calculate but so we might do that at the end because i think in principle we're kind of we're kind of happy here i just like to add a few stabilization frames to the end like 50 maybe or maybe 100 even so that we have a total of 250 frames so that when somebody like stops pouring now i think i'd like to i'd like to do that and that's an, a property that we can um, that we can set on the on the actual flow object so let me try that let me go make my whole simulation 250 frames this now takes a little bit longer to calculate but it's going to be totally worth it i'm sure i'm going to set my simulation length 250 frames too but on my liquid object where it says this use flow parameter here i can animate that with this little thing so if i select that if i click that then this means this value is now animated so it's set a keyframe here and i want it to be on from here to frame 150. so let's click that again so that's unchanged but then i'd like to switch it off so on frame 151 i'd like for this to be disabled and also keyframed and then from this moment onwards the uh, use flow is disabled but if i go over here then it's enabled so the result of that should be i say should because it's a bit of an experiment if i go and free all and bake all 
Let's see what happens. Bing, there we go. Into that. Oh man, I was I was zoomed. I was zoomed, wasn't I? Thank you so much for letting me know. There we go. I'll I'll keep showing it. I'll keep showing it. And this is that article, so you can follow along um, what I'm doing here. I keep doing that time and time again, don't I? I try to be helpful, and then really, it's completely unhelpful. <laughs> Dang. There we go. So this is what it looks like now. <laughs> and as soon as the chat goes away, you actually get to see it. So the only other thing that I'd like to do now is to animate just very subtly the inflow object. So currently this sphere here where the where the coffee originates from is just pouring steady like if it was a vending machine. But what makes the whole simulation look more interesting is if somebody were you know to have a coffee can and then goes and it doesn't it doesn't get held steady so it's kind of you know it moves around a little bit that's the kind of thing that i'm i'm going to do next so that's just by just by taking the flow object and just moving it around ever so slightly this is my new coffee uh, flask by the way this makes less noise when i pour myself a coffee so if i before that there was this this um jangly thing on my other one so now i can just go do this so you can still hear the coffee uh, flowing into the cup, but you don't hear the jangling anymore that the grip used to make. So yeah, from Mira. Very nice. <laughs> very proud of it. It's um, The other one keeps the coffee hotter for longer, but this one's certainly going to see me for through a three-hour stream, so that's totally cool. <laughs> I'll send you the link later, Nate, if you're interested. Okay, so let's make that happen with the fluid object. Liquid object. I'm going to go and animate uh, just the location properties. I don't think I need to animate the rotation, just the location. So I'll just hover over here and type I. That animates all that. And I'll be very subtle here over, over maybe 50 frames. It moves G shift Z to kind of maybe here. And then I'll say I and then I'll leave it there for a few frames set another keyframe and then i'll go over the next so many frames i'll go and move it away again to maybe here set a keyframe leave it there for a bit and then it doesn't have to be on 150 it could just be here G shift Z I'll move that over here maybe I ding perfect so that now moves this and it might not look great while I do it but it'll certainly add and maybe I should meet should have a little bit more animation in there maybe that's a bit too too small now the movements what do you think yeah I should have more erratic stuff going in there I can I can do that I can do that like you know Put a keyframe here and put a keyframe here and then on here I'm gonna go and say like that and say I right. yeah I like that that's kind of make it make it a little more erratic also here so I, just over a few frames, I, whoops, I again. As if <laughs> clumsy waitress just drops by and... And pours coffee as she walks by, you know? See what that looks like when once we simulate it. <laughs> this could look very crazy, but hey, let's see. <laughs> Head over to the cube domain under liquid enable mesh. Disable liquid to remove the colorful balls. That's how we do that. I did do that. So on the liquid. It's not on the liquid, is it? It's on the domain. Liquid, just remove that. And then the blue balls are no longer there. I like it. Hey Goody, so this is cool. I like it. I like it. It's tons of stuff coming out there. So I don't know what the setting is to remove that, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. But there we go. This is how the flow now affects how um, 
how the thing is being poured in. I like it. So the, the erratic movements work quite nicely. <laughs> I love it. Yes, yeah, so it's like coffee is coming out of it. So it could be that when we when we make the voxel size smaller, it'll actually look better. That is that is possible that there's no that these things don't don't fall out anymore. So we could try that. So it might take a little bit longer to um, to simulate, but let's try it. So instead of 32, I might double that to 60. So this now means the calculation is going to take um, uh, four times as long. But you know, we've got the time. I want to see what this is. <laughs> There's a hole in my bucket, yes. I'd like to try out, in the, because we have a little bit of time, I'd like to try this out again, but without a cup object, with something uh, simpler that will that will first fill something up and then drain it. I'd like to see how that works with the outflow object. So I've never tried that before. It might be good to, um, to see that. <laughs> Come on, Blender. Show us what you can do. All right. Here it comes. Yeah, little splashes. That's very nice. Looks much more realistic now, doesn't it? Especially when we put a, put a shader on there. And also, notice only minimal amounts of spillage. So if I set this to something even higher res, it's going to be even nicer, I'm sure. <laughs> we can probably also switch off our sphere here. Coffee being poured, all right. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. I like it. I like it. Let's see if, the, if there is some some you know shader magic we can we can use on here one for the coffee one for the um, one for the for the cup let's see so the domain that's actually now the the coffee isn't it and the cup is the cup let's try start with the cup i'll call it cup mat and then on the bottom here I'll go to the material library VX, pick the sample materials. I will zoom in, but I, I will I will try to, you know, zoom out again. <laughs> One for the coffee, two for the show, yes. So there's basic glass that we can try out on the if you wanted a glass cup, maybe that'll that'll be nice. Let's apply that. And also see what that looks like. It's just the default lighting for now. With um, with no HDRI, so sometimes reflections look better when we have a HDRI that can actually reflect something. Without one, there's nothing in the scene that could reflect things, so that's an issue. Also, let's set ourselves up a camera just while we're while we're at it. View, camera to view. And we can animate that later. And now, of course, is the thing with the light. I'm just going to use one uh, default light. doesn't have to be a point light um. could be just um, uh, could be just That might work for what we're doing. So maybe glass isn't isn't great. Let's see what else we got? Um, brushed metal we could have a metal cup. Let's try that. See what that looks like. Same thing with the reflection. So it's probably best to have uh, to have something like a, a HDRI in there. Screen space reflections. I'm going to use that and ambient occlusion as well. It looks a little bit better then. Ceramic. 
Let's try that. Ceramic might be nice. We should also have something like a like a plane, really, like a ground plane. Ground mat. Uh, let's see if we have something like uh, ceramic polished. Could that go on the ground? That might be nice. Now a liquid, that's kind of a domain, it already has a material, I might rename, I might call it coffee mat. Totally not allowed to rename it for some weird reason. Chocolate swirl, what is that going to look like? Let's try that. That's not chocolate at all. Well, what are you to? There it is. I'm not sure about the bump map there, but it's kind of it's getting close to what we wanted it to be. Coated glossy might not be bad. I could just go and turn the color into something different, or just leave it like this. It's also quite, quite exciting. If the if we wanted the coffee to be filled higher, we could just take the cup and put it lower. It's not really gonna gonna matter now that this is a mesh. We could just do that. So then, if we were to do something like um, like this, you know, then the cup appears to be fuller. Could do that. And if we don't want the, if we don't want it, we can we can always go and make up our minds later. We can we can. Um, Put the handle and also the ground in the same in the same place. For now, let's go and leave it like it is. Are we good with this? Facade glass, fake shading, fake flaky tangelo. Let's try that. What is that? Could be a citrus fruit. I'm not sure. So, oh, that's the cup. Also a nice color for the cup. <laughs> flaky tangelo. I thought I'm still. Putting things on the on the coffee here. Flaky tangela, that wasn't bad. <laughs> Fresnel, glow glass, jewelry, lemon, lemon. I like that. <laughs> Ketchup coffee, yes. Oh, that is nice. Maybe that'll suggest some kind of some kind of foam now. It's a lemon shade. It's got the bumps and everything. That's just. <laughs> it's quite. That's what I like about this material library. Polished walnut soap bubble. What is that? That might not be bad. In the full render. Especially if we can tint it to something. Stars, wire, musgrove, wood pea, wood, and wood boards. That's kind of all we have. Yeah, so what I like about this is that we can still see some reflections here. It's just, it's more like hot water. I might just stick with what we had here. The Oh, that's cranberry juice as well. That's, that's also neat. Cranberry juice. But again, it's a bit like the second coffee shader that I've tried. You don't get to see many of the exciting surface details so I might stick with flaky tangelo and just see if I can if I can do something to the color <laughs> let's try that ooh okay yes this is what that shader looks like huh <laughs> So if we just make it darker, is that something that that works? Kind of. You're not perfect, but I have to say, it almost looks like coffee. Almost. 
<laughs> it's black coffee. We'll stick with that. We'll stick with that. I'm going to change my aspect ratio to something like a square. So like a 800 by 800 should work okay. Let's see if I animate the camera now. We'll start with this. I and I and then towards the end We're here, is that good? I think the angle is not quite um, good here on the first frame because I think I'd like to I'd like to see the coffee literally going in uh, at this point. See if that's any better. Might be nice. If we end like that, it's just two keyframes. I might give it a second light from the other side so that we have a little bit of an, a more balanced way of the shadows there. I don't really mind the light reflection here, even though I could perhaps move it over. Just like so, maybe. Move it out of vision. And then we're just going to go duplicate that and bring it over to the other side here. Same type of light. Um, I'm sure there was a way to duplicate that. Was it Shift D? I think so. <laughs> Light 1. Let's move that kind of here. There. I might make that bigger actually so I don't have the... The shadows, they're going to be softer once it's uh, once it's rendered. Yeah, could we could have something from more from the top as well? I might put a, a mesh light in just from the top, just a, a slight one that we see more of the coffee. Yeah, left and right works nice. I just need something from the top. We can do that. We can do that. Also, save while I'm here. I meant to say light, area light. There we go. That's, that's what I was looking for. And that's, of course, way too strong. But yeah, that kind of gets the idea across. Is one meter, is that, is that okay? Probably is. Maybe even too much still. Coffee shop light atmosphere. I'm okay with it. For something we've cobbled together in about an hour, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, so then the only other thing, viewport is currently 16, render is uh, 64. I think that's usually enough. To get a convince, convincible result, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm okay with this. 
So then the only other thing I was going to do is put the cup down a little bit so that on the last uh, frame the coffee appears to be a little bit higher in the cup. Let me go and select all these things. Say G, Z, slightly lower like so. There. And since most of the calculation is done, I think I can probably just go and render this out and we can see a real preview If we wait like five minutes or so, let's do that. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. Save, render out to... Also, Camilla, very important. What did you order then? We totally want to know. Asian was, that's not quite... That's not quite specific enough. What exactly did you order? <laughs> uh, blender coffee. There we go. I'll use this one here. I'll say stream coffee. V1. Stream coffee V1. And hit accept. Then also we don't need... Um, we don't need alpha, so I'll, I'll use this. And I might use frame rate, I might use 30. And that should do the trick. Render animation. Boom. There we go. That's how fast Blender cracks on with it. That's just, that's just very cool. Let's go and add a bit of coffee magic to it. Blender coffee, stream coffee, here it comes. Image sequence. New sequence from clip. And this usually needs to be 50% slower because I've got it set up so that the default frame rate is 60, but that's, in our case, we only had 30, so it'll be, haha. -ha! Oop, that's not the full resolution. There we go. Hey, not bad at all. <laughs> not bad at all. For something that we've cobbled together in such a short amount of time, I gotta say, that's that's just beautiful. That's just beautiful. <laughs> Woohoo! Almost worth making a 16 by 9 version out of it so that I can post it on YouTube better. But hey, I'll see what I do with that. Thank you so much for dropping by and doing this with me. It's uh, it's always nice to to develop these bits and pieces. Oh yeah, there's this one thing we wanted to do, wasn't it? Uh, using the using the sink. What happens if we drain stuff out of it? That is something we can... Maybe we'll explore that tomorrow. That might be another idea for tomorrow. Let's do the same thing tomorrow. Make a sink and with an inflow and an outflow. See if we can get that done, at least uh, simulation-wise. I like the idea. Now drink it! It's here, here it is. Nate, this is it. Look at that. It's, it's, it has the logo on it already. I maybe have to do that next time as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to go and save this. I might make the scene file available to my supporters a little bit later on. That might be a nice touch. And I might split this out as well into a little clip so that we can keep this for posterity and yeah, enjoy it forever and ever. My friends, have a wonderful Saturday. I'll see you tomorrow for more schnick schnack and shenanigans. I don't really know what yet, but we're going to work it out. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.